Hey, Flip Geometry, let's get back into section 8.4 as we talk about inscribed angles. We talked about central angles already. Now we're going to look at their strange cousins from across town, and that is the inscribed angle. So a central angle makes sense. The central angle vertex is in the center of the circle. And so uh, the circle K here, angle MKL or LKM, is, an, is a central angle. And the degree measure of this angle is the same as the degree measure of arc. But now here's their weird cousin, okay? That's called inscribed. Inscribed angles are an angle whose vertex is a point on a circle and whose sides contain chords of the circle. So circle UVW is an inscribed angle because not only does it start, uh, sorry, it does not have radii as its sides. It has chords as its sides. And its vertex is not the center of the circle, its vertex is a point on the circle. So when you have a circle and you have an angle in it and the angle has all three points of the angle uh, that you need to describe the angle on the circle, that's an inscribed circle. Okay, remember an inscribed polygon would have all of the vertices on the circle. And so this is an inscribed angle, it has the vertex on the circle's side. Okay, that leads to a theorem the measure of an inscribed angle is one half the measure of the intercepted arc. And this is one of those things that's kind of odd and it actually takes a good amount of work to prove. So you need to just kind of believe it. Just practice going like this. Okay, that's true. So um, the, uh, the measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of the intercepted arc. Let's go back to the picture because they didn't put a picture on that slide. So if I were to tell you that the degree of arc here of UW were, I'm going to just going to pick a number, 60 degrees. Uh, that would mean that the angle here at point V is 30 degrees. The angle of the intercept or the angle of the inscribed angle is one half the angle of the intercepted arc. Okay, so just put that in your hat and believe it. There are three cases of this, um, and you will need to use these three cases in proofs. Um, this, if the center is on the inscribed angle, if one of the sides of the inscribed angle is in fact a diameter instead of just a chord, that's one case. Here the center of the circle is inside the inscribed angle, uh, that's another case, and here the center of the circle is outside the inscribed angle. You can prove all three of these. Um, it's not easy, it's a lot of work, um, but you can do it and we will do it together in class tomorrow. Let's do an example of the kind of things you will encounter in class. So um, if angle V, Y, W, and that is right here, V, Y, W, if that, or we need to find the angle there, okay? And then we also need to find the measure of arc W, X. That would be arc W, X. Okay, so this is 60 degrees of arc. This is an inscribed angle, so it should be half the intercepted arc. So if this is 60 degrees of arc, this should be 30 degrees, right? Half of the intercepted arc. Um, the arc is going to, going to be uh, twice the measure of the angle, V, Z, X, V, Z, X. This is 55 degrees, and so this arc should be 110 degrees, okay? Um, now, this whole thing is 110, but I'm only being asked for arc W, X. Well, if this is 110 and this is 60, then the remaining would be 50 degrees of arc. Okay, so you just subtract, I'm sorry, yes, there you go. Um, and so the, the difference is 50 degrees of arc. Okay, um, there's another theorem here. In congruent circles, or if you're talking about the same circle, inscribed angles are congruent if and only if they intercept congruent arcs. So we just said that the inscribed angle measure is half the measure of the intercepted arc. So in order for intercepted angles to be congruent, they have to intercept congruent arcs. And if the arcs are congruent, then the angles are congruent. It's one of those back and forth biconditional sorts of situations. The next theorem is that an angle inscribed in a semicircle is a right angle. So remember that an inscribed angle has half the measure of its intercepted arc. So if you're talking about a semicircle, a semicircle is 180 degrees, right? So half of 180 degrees is 90. So anytime you have a um, essentially a triangle drawn inside a circle such that the hypotenuse is a diameter 
um, then you wind up with this diagram and you always have a right triangle there. That's how you'll use this in proofs. But a, uh, an inscribed angle inside a circle where it intersects a semicircle as its, radi as its arc, that's always going to be 90 degrees. Okay, another one. Um, opposite angles of an inscribed quadrilateral are supplementary. So I have a quadrilateral, any old quadrilateral, we'll call him Jack. Hi, Jack. Nice to meet you. Um, and if I have an inscribed quadrilateral, the opposite, uh, opposite angles are if an inscribed quadrilateral are supplementary. They will add up to 180 degrees. Why? Well, because if you inscribe a quadrilateral, here I have an inscribed angle, and this angle A corresponds to this arc here. And this angle C corresponds to this arc here. How many degrees of measure is arc DB that goes through A plus arc DB that goes through C? If you add these two arcs together, you get 108, sorry, you get 360 degrees, right? And so if you have an inscribed angle, the angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc. So if two arcs add up to 360, then the two inscribed angles add up to 180 because they're half of their arcs. I hope that makes sense. You will play with that in class tomorrow. Let's do a couple examples here before we're done. So um, find each measure in the figure with circle P where dab, oh gosh, did they mean to do that? 208 degrees. Um, and so D, A, B, I hate dabbing. Why did I do that? D, A, B equals 208 degrees. The first thing we want to find out is angle A, B, C. Angle A, B, C. All righty. Um, well, angle A, B, C is inscribed in a half circle, a semicircle. This is 180 degrees because A, C is a diameter. So this is 180 degrees. So that means that the angle that inscribes it is 90 degrees. So that's got to be a 90 degree angle right there. Let's look at angle B, D, C. B, D, C. Well, this angle corresponds to this portion of arc. Hmm, how are we going to do this? Well, let's see. Angle B, D, C is congruent to B, A, C. B, A, C. Oh, look, these are two intercepted angles, two inscribed angles that in, in intercept the same arc. So they are congruent to each other. Okay, let's do that. So 90 minus 68 equals 22. This is 68. This is 90. So this whole thing has to add up to 180. We've already got 90 of it here. So that means that these two add up to 90. This is 68. 68 from 90 is 22. So this is a 22 degree angle. And so that means that this degree of arc must be 44. Okay. Um, and so 44 degrees would mean that this one has to be 22 as well. Okay, here we go. Find a measure of angle DAB. Here's that darn dab. Angle DAB is everything except arc DAB. Arc DAB, 208 degrees. The rest of the circle, 360 minus 208 would be 152. Um, and so the angle must be half of the arc. The arc is 152, 104. I think that's a typo. I think that's a typo. Sorry about that, not a typo. They just went a weird way around it. I had to stop and pause and look at the slide a little bit more carefully. Um, here's what I would do, not what they did. Uh, they told me that arc DAB was 208 degrees. Now they want to know angle DAB. Angle DAB corresponds to the rest of the circle, the other part of the circle, other than arc DAB. This was 208. That means that this is 152. That means that the inscribed arc is half of 152, which is 76. They didn't go that way. They said, what's angle DAB? Well, first let's look at angle DCB, DCB, which corresponds to the 208. The 208, half of that is 104. Um, so they said, oh, this must be 104 degrees. And then they said angle DAB is 180 minus 
B, A, C, which we already determined, right? Um, and so they they do some fun subtraction and they wind up with it being 76. I think it's a lot easier just to look at the, the arc and the arc and say, oh, that's the inscribed angle. It's a lot easier. This is, this is silliness. There's usually in geometry, this is a good opportunity to talk about it. In geometry, there's usually a right way to answer a question. And then there's a way that also gets you to the answer but took a lot more work. This is an example of one of those. All right, this is the end of the slideshow. We will address the, uh, these examples and others in class tomorrow. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments field below, and I'll get to them as quick as I can, or I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, God bless you, Jesus loves you, and so do I. Good night.